Okay. Uh, good evening and welcome to the regular board of directors meeting. Today is Thursday, August 13th. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely via Zoom. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Pania, can you call the roll? Yeah, thank you, President Sheets. Uh, Director Gould. Here. Orzali. Here. Wood. Here. Kelly. Present. Sailors. Here. Clark. Here. Jones. Here. White. Here. And President Sheets, turning it back over to you. Great. This is the Metro Cable announcement. The open session meeting is uh, videotaped for cable cast on Metro Cable 14, replay on Sunday, August 16th at 9 a.m. and Monday, August 17th at 6 p.m. on Channel 14. Webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. It's now the public's opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within the district's jurisdiction, including items on or not on the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any speakers? I had no one contact me beforehand to ask to speak this evening, but Art, if you could unmute all people who've joined and see if there's anyone who would like to comment. <clears throat> Yes, uh, everybody on the attendees list, you are uh, able to respond and unmute yourself if you like at this time, please. And looks like no response. Great, thank you. Uh, moving on to the consent items, are there any questions, concerns, comments? Madam Chair, I'd move the consent. Second. Uh, wonderful. We have a first and a second. Can you please call the roll? Director Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Wood. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Sailors. Aye. Clark. Aye. Jones. Aye. White. Aye. And Sheets. Aye. Motion passes. All right, there is one presentation item, the UC Davis Emergency Medicine Fellowship Program, Assistant Chief Law, Dr. Mackey and Dr. Maynard. Good evening, directors, uh, Assistant Chief Law, and good evening, Chief Harms. Uh, hopefully you can all hear and see me. Um, this is my first time actually doing on video, so I'm excited and embarrassed at the same time. Um, <laughs> Tonight, I wanted to uh, bring a really exciting new program um, to you, uh, the UC Davis Emergency Medicine Fellowship Program. Um, this is something that I'm really proud of in the EMS division and the work that the EMS, bleh, EMS division staff did um, with Dr. Mackey and UC Davis to bring this to fruition over here. Um, Metro Fire is the only agency in the region that was actually asked to participate in this program. And I think that is a testament to the high level and quality of care that Metro Fire's paramedics bring to the community. And so with that, uh, I wanna let Dr. Mackey tell us a little bit about what a UC or Emergency Medicine Fellowship is. And then Dr. Maynard will introduce himself to you all. So Dr. Mackey, take it away. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, Directors. Uh, Chief Harms, good to see you back. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background, there are uh, eight subspecialties of emergency medicine that are identified by the Board of Medical Specialties. Uh, EMS is the newest kid on the block and has grown to be the largest kid on the block as well. So uh, UC Davis applied through a fairly lengthy process to get approval from the American College of Graduate Medical Education to house a fellowship for EMS specific. So what does that mean? There are seven other EMS fellowships in the state of California. There are 70 in the country. Uh, and each year, not every program fills, but we are lucky this year to have our very first in Dr. Maynard, who uh, we'll, you'll meet in just a second. So uh, through the fellowship, it's so what, what is a fellow? A fellow uh, has completed the residency training. So, uh, uh, most other people in his class uh, took a job as an attending physician and are now working in the emergency medicine world somewhere in the country, uh, many of them here in Sacramento. But uh, Dr. Maynard made the election to 
stick around for a year afterwards and get specialized training in EMS. So over the course of the next year, he will get very much the depth, the breadth, the width of EMS from soup to nuts. And we are very grateful that Metro Fire uh, has agreed to house Dr. Maynard and he's already been in the firehouse and he's spent two days uh, with the crews and he will be with you each Wednesday. Um, so like I said, his fellowship will go for a year. His job is to be uh, in the firehouse. He is, he is an educator uh, and he's also a learner at the same time. So he's going to learn from the crews and hopefully use his time there to also teach when he is there. Um, he is fully hands-on, uh, meaning that he is able to do any and all procedures within his scope and even outside the scope potentially of a paramedic. Um, we're starting slow since he's our first one through, but Dr. Maynard is an extremely accomplished physician. He's been very successful in residency. And so I don't wanna belabor further. I'm gonna pass him off to you. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Maynard. And thanks again to the to the district for hosting them and to the board for um, having us present. All right, well, thank you, uh, directors and Chief Harms. I'm, I'm really excited to be able to have the opportunity to introduce myself and to be working with Metro Fire. Um, so I am originally from, I just thought I would take the second just to introduce my background and where I come from. Uh, originally from Utah, I grew up in the Salt Lake City area. Uh, got introduced to EMS right out of high school. Uh, that's where I got certified as an EMT, and I think I caught the emergency medicine bug from that moment onward. Um, after that, I working a few jobs as an EMT in the, in the Salt Lake City area. Ended up going to paramedic school in Idaho and then doing a internship, uh, my paramedic internship in Atlanta, Georgia with Grady Health System. Uh, and then after that, you know, decided to you know, work for a medic for a while, but decided that uh, I wanted to take my skills further and, and was lucky enough to get into medical school. So I attended medical school in, in Las Vegas at uh, Toro University of Nevada. And then after that, did my uh, residency training in emergency medicine at uh, UC Davis. And um, I should backtrack a little bit uh, during uh, in medical school, I ended up uh, taking a commission in the United States Air Force. Uh, so I'm a captain in the Air Force, uh, have done my officer training, and then after I get done with this year uh, with my fellowship and working with Metro Fire, I'll go back into active duty um, and be able to serve in the Air Force there. And that's uh, a little bit about my background. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd take an opportunity to take any questions from you folks. Um, as I said, Dr. Maynard is our first, uh, but this is an ongoing program. We will take applicants every year. Uh, and as long as Metro Fire is willing to host us, we will have the fortunate opportunity to have a physician embedded in Metro Fire each and every year. We're intentional about where he's embedded because there are specific things he has to learn. He's starting at station 65 because it's a summer and uh, he has a chance to do some boat rescue and some water rescue training. Then he'll be moving to 109 uh, where he'll get some hazmat training as well and work with a hazmat unit. And then he'll move over to 21 uh, where he'll get just volume uh, of calls. And he'll do these on a one month rotation. So he'll, at the end of this, he'll have spent four months at each of those stations getting to know each of the personnel. Yep, and so far we've been fortunate to already have Dr. Maynard assist us uh, with a couple of case reviews with crews, the referrals that we received from UC Davis on some pretty complex issues that we don't normally deal with. So he's been an amazing resource so far, and he's only two shifts in. So I think we've got great things to come for both Dr. Maynard and our crews and the, the community that he's going to be running uh, calls with, because we also have the benefit of being able to have medical control directly available on scene for the calls that Dr. Maynard is on the cruise with. Um, so they won't have to call another hospital to consult about um, procedures and appropriate care. So that's pretty exciting for the program as well, I think. So with that, I think we can answer any questions that you might have, directors. Are there any questions? 
Yeah, this is Director White. So the the work schedule, it's every uh, Wednesday. Is that correct? Or what will his uh, uh, time in the stations be like? Yep, Dr. Maidener is with us, going to be with us every single Wednesday for the next 12 months on 12 hour shifts. So he is in the stations from eight in the morning until eight in the evening. And um, he has some requirements and hours and, and other duties that he's fulfilling throughout his program the rest of the week. So that's the reason that he's with us on 12 hour shifts. I just uh, also wanna say uh, welcome and uh, thank you for your service to Dr. Maynard. Thank you very President much. Sure it's it's here. Hi, Director Jones, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Hey, uh, Dr. Maynard. Thank you. You're pretty brave. Hang in there. If you have any questions, call anybody. We'll be glad to share our opinions with you. Best of luck. And thank you for participating and helping all of us at Metro Fire to move forward on a lot of different fronts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. Director Kelly. Oh. No, go ahead. Uh, oh. Director Wood and then Director Kelly. Well, thank you. Uh, Dr. Maynard, uh, no question. Again, like Doc, uh, Director White said, I appreciate uh, you being here. Look forward to working with you. And if you do have any questions, like Gay said, we're all here. We're happy to help you. And thank you very much for your service. My son's in the Air Force, so I know what it's like. And uh, good luck when you go back in full duty. Director Kelly. Uh, yes, I just wanted to extend my uh, sincere appreciation and convey my uh, tell Dr. Maynard how impressed I am. Uh, certainly you have uh, found your way to Metro Fire and uh, hopefully you stick around for a long time and the partnership between Metro Fire and yourself is a long lasting one. Um, and then uh, later on, if you would, tear your shirt off. Let's see that S on your chest. <laughs> Direct President Sheets, I have a question. Yes, sir. Director Gould, go ahead. Thank you. This is actually for Chief Law. Um, Chief Law, has, has there been any consideration in the system since he'll be on um, on shift on a Wednesdays and you mentioned that he's on site on calls as medical direction, is there any consideration that the rest of the system at Metro Fire could utilize his skills to lessen the time it takes to get um, access to another physician when there's a base hospital order only? Could they just get up on the radio and go right to him directly, all of the crews on that shift day? Um, no, that that is not how the program is structured. So if Dr. Maynard is not on scene, uh, the crews still need to go through their um, regular medical control, control process with one of the hospitals. And Dr. Mackey might be able to answer a little bit more of the why that is. That's fine. No's, no's an okay answer. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Dr. Mack, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, you're channeling me, Director Gould. Um, we would like to get there someday. Um, it's going to take not just Dr. Maynard, but uh, it's going to take the, uh, the depth of the faculty as well. It's more than just who you see here. Uh, Dr. Rose at UC Davis is the fellowship director. And we have a multitude of physicians that are supporting Dr. Maynard uh, through his education. My role is, is to be the pre-hospital director. So all of his time out of the hospital, uh, I work with him. But he pulls shifts in the emergency department. Um, I, I'd love to share more. I don't want to take too much of the meeting. But I'll tell you that, uh, that every Tuesday, the entire fellowship, all seven fellowship programs in the state of California meet virtually for, a, for an education session. Uh, and so, and the goal of what we get out of this, I know Dr. Maynard hasn't said this, and so I'll tell him his, his dream, I think, is to work with the PJs. Um, so that's kind of his dream. But, but where, I mean, I've had the benefit of working with you folks for 10 years, and this is where you get started. So Dr. Maynard is, I'm, I'm getting myself out of a job, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're training our, our next year's uh, uh, leadership in EMS and the medical directors, there are enough fellowship programs in the country that the medical directors of next year uh, will all require fellowship training. And so that's the purpose of this. And so he can lead uh, our, our people through EMS. Thank you for Thank that. You. Chief Harms, you had a comment? 
Uh, just uh, just to Chief uh, Chief Law and Dr. Mackey, um, they really put in the work to be able to pull this together. Um, uh, we talked about this a while ago, and you just look at everything that's happening in the organization. Then we added COVID on top of it. Um, but there's such a great benefit that, that I really want to recognize them for being able to do that. And then um, Dr. Mackey and Dr. Maynard put together a video. And uh, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see it with an introduction and really talking about what they're doing and uh, the roles and the responsibilities that he has and stuff and put that out to the membership. And it has been very positive return back of really thinking outside of the box of something maybe that we hadn't done before. And uh, it's interesting how many people want to know what are, not just what can he do, but what are those other opportunities that may be there in the future. So um, kudos to everybody for putting that together. And Dr. Maynard, welcome, welcome to be here. Yes, I echo all of those sentiments. Any other uh, qu uh, questions, comments for the board members? This, this is uh, Director White. I just also wanted to thank uh, Dr. Mackey and Chief Law for work on this program. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Dr. Mackey is around for a very long time, but I know that uh, regardless of what position you're in, one of the biggest charges we have is trying to prepare the organization for success uh, without us or after we're gone. And I, I really do recognize and appreciate his efforts to uh, train additional uh, people to eventually maybe even fill his own role. So I just wanted to say thanks. Yes, I, I agree. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Mackey. So Dr. Maynard, you are in very good hands. All right, no action necessary. And we'll be moving on to action items. The first action item is the Sacramento Mobile Integrated Health uh, Care Pilot Project, MOU approval, Chief Harms and uh, Captain Perryman. Uh, good evening again, directors. I'll kick this off and then we'll turn it over to Scott Perryman. Um, we have had a lot of discussions. I know some of you directors had a lot of discussions before I ever got here. Uh, with a lot of hard work, we're bringing a MOU to all of you tonight for moving forward uh, with the mobile integrated health pilot. Um, I have Scott that is here. He'll give kind of a little brief overview uh, but, you know, another program that even uh, despite COVID uh, and a lot of hurdles along the way, something to really look forward to. And something that we've said is that we wanted to add additional tools in our toolbox. And really for the membership and for the service we deliver out there, uh, I really think we have an opportunity to do that now. And I'll turn it over to Scott to talk about the program just a little bit and a little bit about the MOU. And we can move forward from there. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank you very much. I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. We can. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, first of all, good evening, uh, board president, directors, and chief harms. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Um, as you know, I'm Scott Perryman. I'm one of your captain paramedics. And the last time I spoke with you was, um, I believe it was October 10th of 2019. It's where we presented about the concept of the mobile integrated health pilot. Um, well, I, I'm here tonight as an MOU between Metro and the Hospital Council has been presented and that allows, uh, that will allow the transfer of money for the pilot. Uh, to give a quick recap, um, EMS has no other options than to take a patient to the emergency department or they sign a patient initiated refusal of service. Uh, so we only have one tool in that toolbox and it's not always the right one. Uh, meaning that we can either take them to the hospital or they, they sign initiated refusal of service. Um, it's not that patients don't need care, but it's just not always the right tool, uh, taking everybody to the emergency department. And other areas are having the same issues that we are. We're not an anomaly. And that's why places like LA County Fire, LA City Fire, Beverly Hills Fire Department have all started mobile integrated health programs looking at their specific needs. Um, and it's worked very, very well for them. It makes sense when you pair a firefighter paramedic with an advanced provider, such as a nurse practitioner or physician assistant. Um, it combines pre-hospital and hospital medicine to better meet the needs of, of the community. Mobile Integrated Health is, is designed to improve care for high utilizers of the emergency uh, department and EMS. It uh, helps reduce unnecessary emergency department transports. It reduces hospital readmissions and it helps 
navigate people who just need that navigation component. And right now is a big time of helps provide appropriate care for patients with behavioral health issues. Um, this entire time, we have worked with many, many individuals, making sure that we work toward, you know, working together towards uh, our community needs. And we have moved forward. And we're here today uh, with an MOU that allows the funding to be moved to Metro Fire to run that MIH program. Uh, One Health Organization is still moving forward with this pilot, uh, but they've had le- uh, recent changes in their legal counsel and they needed more time uh, before, they, uh, before they signed the MOU. And we do anticipate them to move forward and that will provide additional funding to what's in your packet now. So we're excited about that. Uh, we're in the RFP process, working with our purchasing and procurement division. We're searching for a medical group that can provide a medical director and advanced providers uh, for this pilot. When I think about all this, all of this is coming together at a critical time, knowing that uh, the flu season is right around the corner and that we're in the current COVID-19 pandemic. This program gives the community the love, or this, this program gives the community that we love and we serve a, a new solution to their program. Uh, this concludes my presentation and, and staff recommends that the board approve the MOU of the SAC MIH pilot. I'm open to answer any of your questions and turn the time over to uh, Chief Harms. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments from the board members? Madam Chair, I make a motion that we enthusiastically endorse this um, proposal this evening. Probably not a finer thing has come before us in many, many moons. And everyone that's been involved, uh, none the least of which is Captain Perryman, uh, should be congratulated. So I make a motion we adopt enthusiastically. I'll second that. And I just want to add congratulations, Captain Perryman, seeing this through. I, would, I think it was 16, 2016, we were back in D.C. talking about this. And I know you've worked tirelessly and you deserve uh, some credit for that. So thank you for all your work. All right, great. We have a motion and a second. Um, and I have my hand raised. Oh, I didn't see it. I, I apologize. Hi. Too small. No, thank you. Uh, I don't uh, just the hands. <laughs> Not thank you, Madam President. Hey, just to tag team on Director Woods. Yeah, I can recall what 16, 2016, four or five years ago, we started talking about this idea of alternative destinations. And uh, I again kudos to uh, Captain Perryman. I can recall having this conversation with Maurice Johnson and many of the representatives on cap to cap from our area hospitals. And it's, it's a long haul, but in the end, it's worth it. We'll have a solid program. I'm really looking forward to, to the success of this program and its expansion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Any other comments from board members? Madam I Chair, have, I could, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Director Kelly and then... Uh, Director Kelly Director- first, yeah. All right. Um, I would like to say, you know, again, this is just a, an example of where Metro Fire is leading. And uh, I would certainly hope that uh, this is something that we'll be able to help other districts uh, throughout the state or the country for that fact, because certainly it is uh, a better model for uh, caring for individuals that are um, uh, not not destined for the hospital so much, um, but uh, uh, those frequent flyers and everybody else that that uh, are on the fringes of uh, medical care that need uh, need appropriate care. This is the best way I think to uh, to care for them. It's uh, been a long time in the works, and again, my kudos uh, to all those involved. Thank you. Thank you, Director Kelly. Director Clark. Yes, I also um, uh, agree with the sentiments of my uh, board, other board directors. And also, I'm, I'm very excited about us uh, use, making use or efficient use of our resources. This is very good for our district. Absolutely. Thank you. Agreed. Any other comments? Uh, congratulations, uh, uh, Captain Perryman, on this accomplishment. Uh, Thank you very much. I know I've worked with a lot of the uh, uh, the directors and a lot of people, so thank you. Uh, Madam, now, please call the roll. Before we call, oh, yes, sir. Madam Chair, before we do that, can I say final Absolutely. thing? Yes. 
you know, this has been a tremendous effort that Metro has been leading. And we've heard from my colleagues about all the different players. I'd encourage us to find some time for Captain Perryman to step away just a bit from this and mm -hmm. reflect on all the work that's been done and put together a playbook for our other fire agencies up and down this state and across the country, because there's a lot of stuff that's inside his coconut there. And <laughs> if, if something happens to him, um, we're gonna be at a major disadvantage for knowing all of this. And it seems reasonable that once we make this decision tonight that we figure out logistically how Captain Perryman can sit down with somebody and reflect on our, this long journey and get it in writing so that we can have a playbook to potentially sell to others. I'm just kidding. But, you know, to consult with others, it would really make, uh, it would encourage others to see Metro Fire as the leader that it is. Thank you very much. And I look forward to the role. Agreed. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Absolutely. Director Gould. Enthusiastically, I. <laughs> or Zally. Even more enthusiastically, I. Wood. I. Kelly. Dragging the group down, I. <laughs> <laughs> Sailors. I. Clark. I. Jones. Aye. White. Aye. And Sheets. Aye. Motion enthusiastically passes. <laughs> All right, moving on to action item number two, SCURS, the extension of the medical coverage benefit program. It looks like uh, Deputy Chief uh, uh, Castanchini. Good evening, board president, directors, and Chief Harms. Greg Castantini, Deputy of Administration. Tonight, I'm here uh, to discuss the extension of medical coverage benefits for 14 retirees that retired from the Florin and North Highlands departments prior to the organization of Metro Fire in 2000. Prior to July 1st of two, um, 2004, these retiree medical costs had historically been subsidized by excess earnings from the SCURS investments. On November 20th, uh, of 2003, SCURS determined that the subsidy was not a vested retirement benefit and discontinued payments. So on June 3rd of 2004, the district adopted a resolution funding the annuitant medical subsidy coverage costs for these retirees equal to the subsidy that SCURS was paying. Historically, the Metro Fire Board of Directors has renewed this resolution every five years, and it is up this year. So tonight, the district is asking the board to adopt this resolution that would authorize the payment of medical subsidy coverage for these 14 retirees at a cost of $63,665 for the 2021 budget year with a 5% cost of living adjustment annually. Please let me know if I can answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any questions, comments from the board? Yes, uh, President Sheets. This this is Director Jones. Uh, I'd like uh, I have a brief question and then a comment. Uh, Chief Cassettini, when you say a five percent, is that a cap or is that an automatic for the next five years? Uh, that is an automatic for the five years. So our research shows us that typically. Um, the uh, adjustment for the COLA, which it's based on, ranges from 4 to 8%. And so we get at a 5% each year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And then my comment is I uh, very much appreciate your report. It's important to go through the history and how we started on this. Um, anyway, I, I very much appreciate your thorough report, including all the institutional history. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I'll move this item. I'll second it. Wonderful. We have a first and a second. Madam uh, Clerk, can you please call the roll? Director Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Wood. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Sailors. Aye. Clark. Aye. Jones. Aye. White. Aye. And Sheets. Aye. 
Motion passes. All right, moving on to reports, uh, the president's report. I have nothing to report. Uh, Fire chief support, chief arms. Good evening, directors. Uh, it, it's been a very busy three weeks since the last time we were here, uh, both here at home and uh, across the state for our crews. First off, I would like to congratulate all the directors who will be staying with us for another four years. I look forward to working with each of you over this next four years as we move forward. Congratulations. Um, new hires. Uh, on July 28th, we hired a new administrative specialist. She'll be working in CRRD. Her name is Lisa Gates. Uh, as far as promotions, on July 27th, uh, Battalion Chief or Captain Grant Russell was promoted to Battalion Chief. He's assigned at Battalion 9 on C shift. And then on August 2nd, Captain Brendan Hogan uh, was promoted to captain and he is working on B-Ship. I'm not real sure where he's assigned at right now. Uh, to kind of go along with our theme for EMS night, uh, firefighter Justin Fry and paramedic Chantel Crane have been selected to be the drill masters for our SRP Academy that is coming up. Uh, that will be later in August or early, um, actually I think that's early September that will start. And so we'll be putting additional folks through the SRP Academy coming up. So meetings that we had were as a uh, July, we had an executive staff meeting between Sac City Fire and the fire chiefs. Once again, these meetings are um, no real agenda, uh, but we spent about two and a half hours together just discussing the activity, um, whether it would be staffing or response or training. And the other side is just having that relationship and that open communication that we have with the city. On the 29th of July, we had our labor management meeting uh, along with uh, Vice President McGoldrick. Uh, we talked about Station 68 and the, and the final plans for the review of Station 68. Um, talked about uh, the part-time medics in service and, and kind of the impact they're having the mobile integrated health unit, which is definitely one of the items that uh, folks are looking at. Um, we talked about the helicopter program along with a number of other ones. We will do a side letter agreement here real soon about the hazmat staffing and the staffing of the hazmat unit. So again, a lot of very positive stuff. Uh, also on July or actually August 6th, uh, as the new chair of the California Metro Chiefs, I chaired the meeting for the uh, metros. This year's conference in September has been canceled. So that kind of takes that off my plate. But uh, again, it's the 14 <laughs> largest fire departments across the, uh, the state and uh, a lot of just activity with the fire activity that's going on, COVID and uh, the legislative stuff. Um, the next thing um, I really want to talk about just a little bit and, and first start off with Randy Orzali, uh, Director Orzali and Jeff Fry. You guys can remember quite a while back, we came to the board and we showed you some new technology uh, for thermal imaging cameras. And our goal was how do we find funding? How do we work forward to taking this little handheld, a little bit bigger than what your cell phone is, unit and put it in the hands of every firefighter that is out there. And uh, Randy and Jeff, along with the um, Sacramento Public Safety Foundation, built a, really a, a PowerPoint program, a uh, message that could be taken out, um, and had worked with Supervisor Frost to be able to purchase some of them in the very beginning to, to get the program moving forward. Um, we had an opportunity, and uh, Battalion Chief John Runicki uh, really took all the information that had already been put together. And John, if you remember, we assigned him over to um, he was working with the city on the um, UASI program, the urban area search or urban area security program. And as you all know, that is one of the things that when we go back to DC for cap to cap, we always talk about the additional funding each year and being able to use that. Um, John took a camera with him. He took all the stuff that was put together by the foundation and did a presentation over there, did all the paperwork. Um, John is luckily sits on the decision committee over there, um, really convinced the other members that are there will be receiving uh, about $160,000. And then through the committee, they will do the purchasing 
of a tick for each in each individual riding position that's out there. So really great news. Uh, as I said, Director Zali, you put the work in to be able to get this forward. Uh, the opportunity came forward and, and before long, we should be able to have those uh, ticks in every riding position out there. So thank you for that and, and we'll move forward with, with there. Um, otherwise, um, tonight we will have um, Chief Mitchell, no, um, Chief Green is gonna talk tonight about um, statewide deployment, staffing, uh, some USAR stuff uh, with COVID and people testing positive or being exposed. It is definitely a, a challenge for us right now uh, with staffing and where we're at. Um, that ends my report for tonight. Uh, I'll take any questions that you have. Thank you, Chief. Any questions or comments for the Chief? Mr. Randy Arzana, a question so much as a recommendation for the work that went in to this initiative and my thanks to Supervisor Frost, which he for. So thanks to everyone. Thank you, Director Rosali. Anybody else? Director Kelly. Director Kelly, go ahead. Yes, uh, Chief, welcome back. And I'm uh, certainly glad that uh, the resources were found to put these in the hands of every uh, seat um, on the fire, uh, fire apparatus. I think it's uh, something that's uh, wonderful and uh, shows you uh, how, uh, how well the group works together. And thank you for everybody involved. Anybody else? Thank you, I, Chief. This is Director oh. White. I just also wanted to say thanks to uh, Director Orzali and the, the uh, Sacramento Public Safety Foundation and uh, Supervisor Frost, um, everyone that contributed to pretty significant goal to get a thermal imaging camera for every riding position for a district the size of, of Stack Metro Fire. So that's uh, a huge accomplishment. I know a lot of work went into that. I just wanna thank everyone involved. Thank you, Director. Any other comments or questions for the directors? Thank you, Chief. Uh, moving on to the operations report, uh, Assistant Chief Green. Thank you, President Sheets. Uh, good evening, uh, directors and Chief Harms. Uh, Chris Green here, Assistant Chief assigned to the Operations Division. I'm the shift commander for B-Shift. I'm standing in for Chief Bridge tonight to give you your operations report. And uh, as Chief Harms alluded to, uh, I want to focus on two of the main topics we've been working on in operations since our last board meeting. One is um, our response for state wildland fires, uh, which are starting to pick up. And uh, two, uh, how COVID-19 is affecting uh, our members and our staffing. So I'll start with the state wildland activity. Um, over the last few weeks, we've had a couple deployments with our uh, OES Type 3 engine uh, to a couple small incidents throughout the state. Um, they've since returned. As of today, uh, two of our members from the California Incident Management Team 10 uh, are currently uh, pre-positioned in Redding, uh, awaiting an assignment um, probably within the next few days to one of the fires that's starting in Northern California um, up near the Oregon border at this point. Um, all of our other resources are currently in the county. Um, and if anyone's been following the news within the last uh, 24 hours, there have been two significant fires that uh, have sparked California and uh, South Ox is currently going through um, their process of requesting units from Northern California. It hasn't hit our region yet, but we fully expect to uh, possibly deploy all three of our OES engines uh, within the next few days, if not weeks. Um, as you know, uh, really August starts the beginning of uh, increased fire activity throughout the state of California, and it looks like um, we are on track with, uh, with that as we've seen in the past. Um, we are currently contractually committed to continue to support our uh, three OES engines for deployment. Um, that also includes the option to send uh, two battalion chiefs out, one is a strike team leader, another is a leader trainee, um, as well as our obligations for our three incident management team members. Um, should also note that our USAR task force uh, within the region is uh, number one up for deployment in the month of August. Uh, should USAR be deployed, it would affect uh, about 10 of our members who are currently rostered to go. And we should note that three of our members joined the uh, urban search and rescue water rescue deployment uh, to the hurricane in Hawaii just a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, three of our members uh, did respond, came back safely. And uh, fortunately for the citizens of uh, Hawaii and the islands, uh, there was no significant flooding uh, they had to attend to. Uh, that concludes the update on uh, the state wildland activity, uh, which will, will likely evolve as we go through the next couple of weeks. Uh, the next topic I want to discuss is our current COVID-19 update uh, for all members at Metro Fire. Um, if we go back all the way to March 7th, we have conducted uh, swab testing for 202 of our members as of today. Of those 202 members that were tested, uh, 13 have tested positive. Um, if we look at today's specific numbers, just for today, what we're dealing with, um, we currently have 30 members that have been placed off duty for COVID testing. Of those 30 uh, that are out for testing, nine are symptomatic, and we've related uh, six uh, positive tests out of those nine symptomatic folks, of which three have been put towards other illnesses. Um, really kind of the way to summarize this is we've been seeing peaks and valleys within the last three to four weeks with our COVID exposure process. And our exposures are anywhere from uh, positive patients that we've seen on medical aids, and also folks that have just picked it up uh, what we believe to be out of the community. So it's really not one area that's been centered. Um, on the uh, more positive side, all of our members that have tested positive and have been symptomatic have, uh, for the most part, had minor symptoms. Uh, none have been hospitalized. Uh, which is good news, uh, though we do have two members that have some lingering symptoms that, uh, that are, they're having a hard time um, um, dispelling, but we're hoping for a good quick recovery and to get them back to work soon. Uh, to translate this into what our current staffing levels are, um, with 30 members off really starting tomorrow morning for our next operational period, um, it, is a, it is a very large strain on the membership to keep staff. Uh, all of our station, uh, stations are 100% staffed and open as of today. And we remain in commitment and working closely with local 522 uh, to accomplish that. Just this morning, uh, Chief Harms, uh, myself, and uh, local 522 Vice President Mike McGoldrick filmed a video that will be released to all members tomorrow, really emphasizing the need to uh, be available to come to work on extra days if needed, and also to outline additional uh, considerations for our members to remain healthy as remaining 100% staffed is absolutely our number one priority. And it's, it's been very good to work uh, closely with local 522 in unison on this topic. Um, it should, should be noted, and I know we spoke about this several months ago, but we did create within operations a uh, comprehensive staffing plan to address what happens if we have even more members above the 30 off right now on how we continue to staff our stations. Uh, the plan is very detailed and uh, happy to report that we do have the ability to keep all of our stations open, even with additional members uh, becoming ill. So I hope that uh, when we report out from operations in a couple of weeks, we have uh, some more positive results. Um, mm -hmm. But what we're seeing here at Metro Fire is really on par with what we're seeing overall within Sacramento County with our exposure levels. Uh, that concludes the operations report. More than happy to answer any questions uh, you may have, directors. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any comments or questions for the rest of the directors? Thank you. Uh, moving on to Firefighters Local 522. Goldrick, are you on the line? I am. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the directors who have uh, run unopposed. Um, unfortunately for you, it's too late to back out now, so that's where <laughs> we're at. we are. Um, I want to meet. I want to welcome Dr. Maynard. I had the pleasure of meeting him the other day. I think um, that program has two or threefold benefit to it. Not only will it give us a little more exposure to their side of the picture, but there are some people that we have in house that are very talented, and their last stop may not be a firefighter paramedic on an ambulance. So I think that's one thing that uh, is an added plus for our membership. Um, I will also say um, we are dealing with the COVID issues as best as can as we can. I want to reiterate to the board directors that there is no want for any of the employees that are off right now. We're working with administration and they're totally taken care of. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm willing to field those. Other than that, that ends my report. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions or comments for Mr. McGoldrick? Thank you, sir. 
Uh, moving on to committee and delegate reports. Uh, the executive committee has not met for some time and we do not have a planned meeting and nothing else to report. Uh, moving on to communication center JPA, uh, Chief Shannon. Uh, good evening, President Sheets. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, comments on the uh, comm center JPA. I think as uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we've had two academies, 20-1 uh, Academy and Chief Wagman since he's been in the comm center, was, kind of took a different approach, uh, made that these academies a little longer, a little more intensive uh, to see if they could actually get a better result, which was they were having some issues with at the end of the, the academies in the past. So with that being said, the seven that graduated in 20-1, three of them have already been signed off for call takers and working on the phones. I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I, what I will tell you is um, that's a very fast um, uh, trajectory for these, these new employees to get to the point where they're at. Uh, so I'll take uh, the comm center's word for that. Um, so three of them already been signed off out of the seven. The other four are on, on their way. They're doing a great job. It really added to the spirit and, and the ability to, and the workmanship out that's going on over there in the center. So that's moving along. 20-2, uh, uh, that academy, I believe, with five has started. It's in week two. And everybody is doing real well so far. So um, with that, that's the end of the report for uh, the comp center. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments for the chief? Moving on to California Fire and Rescue Training, JPA, Chief Shannon, you're up. Um, with that, uh, President Sheets, I do not have a report for the um, uh, training JPA. Uh, we will meet again September 17th at uh, four o'clock in Gold Canal. Thanks, sir. I'm moving on to Finance and Audit Committee, Director Rosali. Uh, at the last meeting, I misspoke with, regarding the date of the uh, next meeting. It is, in fact, the 27th of August, and um, we look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Policy Committee, Director Gould. No report. Awesome. Uh, before we move into closed session, we'll take board members' questions and comments, and Director Gould, we'll start with you. Um, just want to thank the staff for their reports tonight. Super exciting, what a great meeting we've had with such forward thinking ideas. And it just, again, it's just, it's impressive. Uh, and thanks to my colleagues and congratulations to all of them who uh, have been reelected by default, I suppose. And so uh, I look forward to continuing to work with all of you. Uh, that ends my comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, Director Orzali. Briefly, this has been a very productive meeting, um, and I've heard from the chief uh, about the efforts on the part of the foundation, um, and uh, and I, I'm hopeful we will have some more positive news very soon. With that, uh, thank you so much for everybody's efforts and all of the programs that were on this. This has probably been the most forward-thinking, creative board agenda I've been privileged to participate in. So thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, Director Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just briefly, welcome again to Dr. Maynard. Thanks again to everyone else, Chief Law and uh, Captain Perryman. Again, Captain Perryman, uh, all the work he's put into that, he deserves some, some recognition for that. And it's wonderful to see uh, this baby coming out for him. So. Uh, everyone else, it's going to be a hot one, and just stay safe, stay hydrated, and, and best to all of our crew out there. All right, Director uh, Clark. Okay, yeah, I, I, um, I'm very excited, excited about what's uh, going on uh, within our, uh, in our, uh, our community in our district. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the reports. I also want to welcome Dr. Maynard, uh, uh, welcome, and, um, welcome him on board. And uh, it's a, this is a great meeting. I, I really, I'm really enjoying this meeting. Uh, and I want, once again, I want to thank everybody for the report. Great reports. That's all I have, Madam Chair. All right, Director Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to reiterate all the thank yous and kudos that my previous directors, the, the directors' uh, previous comments 
have uh, have established. The overall, this is, it's just so fantastic. There's so many different levels. We have very long-term, medium-term, term, and immediate needs and challenges that have been addressed by our staff, by all the firefighters in the field, and by this board of directors to move, keep us moving forward. And I'd really wanted to acknowledge this long-term as well as short-term historical building that we have done, whether it's stick to uh, stick to itiveness for the uh, mm -hmm. mobile integrated health unit, whereas it's uh, hour by hour, shift by shift concern to keep up our minimum staffing. These are all super, super important items. And I'm so pleased and proud that a Metro has been able to meet these challenges as they come upon us. And it says a bit about the good work that are um, elected by declaration uh, board of directors has accomplished. And I have all the greatest hope and aspirations that will continue to build on this progress. Thank you. Thank you, Director, uh, Director Walt. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also just want to congratulate fellow directors on your reelection. I do look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, I also wanted to once again welcome Dr. Maynard and to thank the men and women of the of Sacramento Metropolitan Fire and our cooperators who just prior to this meeting were extinguishing a 200 plus grass fire um, off Meese and I own road that burned all the way to the Van Vleck Ranch. So uh, I know it's triple digits and uh, there's a lot of uh, our employees that were out there working very diligently to get that containment on that fire. And I uh, also want to thank uh, President McGoldrick and the members of Local 522 for continuing to step up and work the extra hours necessary during uh, wildland season and the pandemic. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Director Sailors. Thank you, Madam President. Um, my sentiments um, reflect what every director has said previously. Um, so thank you and have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Director Kelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I would like to extend my appreciation for the high performing team, otherwise known as Metro Fire, and uh, uh, tell uh, uh, Chief Law and uh, Dr. Maynard, Drs. Maynard and Mackey, uh, wonderful work that you're doing. Uh, so happy that you guys are associated with our organization. Uh, Mr. Perriman, uh, excuse me, Captain Perriman, thank you again for the work that you have put forth. And uh, these are just further examples of uh, the fine organization that Metro Fire is. And I would like to tell the directors that we're reelected with uh, no opposition. Uh, running, running with no opposition is oh so sweet. So uh, <laughs> congratulations and uh, uh, look forward to uh, another quality uh, board uh for another four years and uh everybody associated with metro fire uh hope you guys have a safe weekend and uh these temperatures that are heading into uh triple digits uh for a sustained period of time um the guys at 522 will certainly be uh out busy and uh, i wish them uh i wish them safety and and uh godspeed thank you for the time all right, I also wanted to thank uh, everyone for their presentation and report tonight and the, uh, welcome Dr. Maynard. Uh, congratulations to the promotions and then the reelected directors. Um, I also uh, wanna send um, speedy recoveries for the 30 members that are off and the ones that are symptomatic, hopefully uh, send them best wishes to, to return to online. Uh, stay safe this weekend uh, through these hot temperatures and we, with that, we'll move into closed session. Thank you.
All right, so we will reconvene to open session and we will have you, uh, Ms. Finia, report out on closed session item number one. Okay, thank you, Director. Uh, the board met in closed session pursuant to subdivision B of section 54956.9. The board voted unanimously to authorize the fire chief to work with legal counsel to initiate litigation. If the action is formally commenced, details will be available upon request. Thank you. Uh, General Counsel Lavra will report on um, uh, closed session item 2A and B. Uh, thank you, uh, Board President Sheets. Uh, the board met in closed session to consider the uh, claim for damages uh, under Government 910 for Leslie White III. Uh, the board voted unanimously to give authority to the board clerk to reject that claim and refer the matter to the district's liability carrier. The board also considered the uh, 910 claim for damages for claimant Lori uh, White. Uh, the board also voted unanimously to give authority to the board clerk to reject the claim and refer the matter to the district's liability carrier. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, we will adjourn. Our next board meeting is August 27th. Have a good night, everybody. Stay safe. You guys have a good night, everybody. too. Thank you, everyone. Oh, so Thank you. Stay safe. Stay cool.